Now we say, well, what kind of rituals do we do? For example, the most popular perhaps in Hindu homes is daily worship. So I'll give you a very quick run of what daily worship is all about, because some of you perhaps have seen it, but you don't know why you're doing it. The idea of daily worship is you have an image that you, uh, you prefer because this is how you relate to spirituality. I love Shiva. This is the way I relate to spirituality. Good for you. So you sit in front of the image and you say, I'm going to worship. Now what do you do in worship? Well, first of all, you sprinkle water. Sign of purification. Every religion is the same thing, sprinkling water. Second thing, you light a lamp, saying going from ignorance to enlightenment. I'm trying to make spiritual progress. Then you might offer a flower. You say, why do you offer a flower? Ask anybody this. We don't know. We just do it. It's a symbolic gesture to say, I want to offer my heart to the idea of spirit. I want to give my heart to spirituality. Now, for you to do this, you don't plunk, you know, pl pluck your heart out. Hopefully not. Otherwise, you've got ambulances going all over the place. You say symbolically, flower, scented. Hopefully, good scent. So, you offer food. Why do you offer food to God? Do you think God is hungry? No, no. It's a gesture of saying... I really, it's a gesture of gratitude, that's all. There are a lot of interesting things in the kind of worship ceremony that you should, you should be aware of. Then, for example, if you go to the temple, same thing, same worship taking place. Then you say, okay, you sometimes in some of the traditional temples, you go around the deity, the central deity, the central figure, in a clockwise manner. And people ask, why do you go clockwise? As the reason is this. You want to say that you want to keep God on your right hand side. The only way you can go around an image, keeping God on your right hand side, is to go clockwise. Otherwise, it becomes anti clockwise. The same thing is true, for example, you do the arti ceremony. What's the arti ceremony? They put five lamps on a dish and you wave it around in the, in the, in the front of the image of God. Arti ceremony is a welcoming ceremony, saying, I want to welcome the idea of spirit in my home or in my temple, invoking spirit in the temple or in your home. And then the arti plate, always ask your parents, you'll be surprised to find the reasons. It always go clockwise. If you ask your parents, why does the arti tray go clockwise? They say, we don't know, we've been doing it. And the answer is very interesting. The reason is this. Since ancient days, the Hindus have been observing the, 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 the world around them, and they've noticed that the sun has a habit, if you look if you're in the northern hemisphere, the sun has a habit of going, if you watch the sun, of going clockwise. In the winter, it's very just little, just goes a little bit up and go whip down. In the summertime, it goes a bit higher. But if you are in the northern hemisphere, the, the rhythm of the sun is clockwise. That's why the clocks go clockwise. That's why all the clocks go clockwise. They're following the rhythm of the sun. So the arti tray also goes clockwise. And of course, you've got friends in Australia, so you can send them a message now, text message. You know, in the southern hemisphere, the sun goes anti-clockwise. So you can tell them, do the arti ceremony going anti-clockwise. You'll have great fun. You see, know the reason, and then you can smile and play with it. If you're in the equator, you, go, you don't know which way to go. Because the sun appears to be going both anti-clockwise and clockwise, depending on how you face it. So anyway, I'm just showing you the deeper ideas about ritualistic aspects. Because you didn't realize all this is kind of embedded in the kind of routine, casual thing you observe in your homes or in the temple. <coughs> so that's one kind of ritual. Then you might decide, some of you, for example, I said that Hinduism comes in two flavors. Either it is personality related, then you do arti ceremony and go in temple and sit in front of an image and worship and tinkle bells. And by the way, do you know why you tinkle bells? Very interesting. Some people say you're waking up God. I say if God is sleeping, that's not a lovely chap. You know, he's kind of, he goes on snoozing, you know, and going siesta. The reason why you tinkle bell is strange. You may be surprised. Suppose you live in a very kind of busy, near a busy road. You hear the noise of the traffic all the time. Magic like magic, if you tinkle a little, tiny little bell, tinkle it, all your attention <coughs> immediately goes on the, the sound of the bell and blocks out the sound, the noise from outside. It's a strange phenomena. The tinkling bell, in a way, immediately focuses your attention on that sound and blocks out other noises. So there are kind of lovely ideas why we tinkle bell, why we sprinkle water, why we light a lamp, why we offer flowers and food, why we do arti. So these are, if you like, it's nice for you to know the reason what's happening and what's a symbolic gesture. Free e-learning course in Hinduism. To register, please visit www.hindu-academy.com. Talks on Hinduism. Sponsored by People Care. Encouraging caring for the elderly in their own homes. For more information, please visit peoplecare.com.